Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today we have a special show where it's just Darren and I, and we're talking about what happens if you do a podcast and no one shows up. My name is Steve Akeley. I'm joined by Darren McCroy. What's going on, dude? Oh, nothing. What's going on with you, Steve? Oh, not much. So I usually tend to avoid holiday weekends, but I, you know, I figure if you ask everyone and say, are you going to be able to be here? And they say yes. But then you can go ahead and do it. So I don't yeah, they ever should just be there. Blind. Right, right. So um, Lori Mangum was supposed to be here. Now she's got a legitimate excuse. She's in Louisville, and I guess they've had some bad storms, and she's lost the power and has no ability to jump online and do the podcast. I get that because if that happened to me, we just wouldn't podcast either. So that's a, that's a good one. Lenny, he's just MIA. I have no idea yeah. what he's doing. He's probably eating a sandwich and doesn't want to come yeah, on. Yeah, I was going to say, he's probably enjoying a sandwich and hanging his head so low because he likes little low-brow sandwiches. <laughs> it's just been a, a self-discovery for him. And then Becca, yeah. I knew this was a bad idea, but I checked with her first and said, you're not podcasting uh, on Sunday, are you? And she's like, no, I, I'm planning to. Is that okay? And I was like, all right. Okay. If you want to, if you're, I, I mean, I'm fine with it. I, I don't, but here we are. Just she's in North Dakota, right? She's in North Dakota. She goes there every year to see the family. That's the big thing. They go, they have a lake house. The Boltons have a lake house and she goes to that. And uh, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, Eddie's there, her brother, and then uh, parents, of course. I think they try to avoid it. I think they started the tradition, and then it gets so out of control with Eddie and Becca and whatever crew that they invite. I think they've decided it's best just to stay away. Don't go to uh, Fourth of July weekend. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure they got their whole crew there, and um, I, I don't. I, I, beyond that, I don't know what else happened. So yeah, yeah so that's just the two of us. So, yeah, just the two um, of us. Uh, if we would have done a show, would you have had a small talk? Oh yeah. Oh, what was it? Let's let's talk about it. Just you and I. Let's see what we got. Okay, so if you could have an unlimited amount of anything that's not money, what would you take, and why? Okay. Um, can it be gold? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm kind of going along the fact anything that you have an unlimited amount of, you could probably sell. And make a bunch of money off of. And so the money also wouldn't be an issue. Okay. I mean, if it's gold that you want, it's not creative, though. <laughs> I just want to be rich. I don't need to be creative. Uh, yeah, I can. You can get all the. Uh, I don't know what you're going to get. Styrofoam peanuts and be like, if I get enough styrofoam peanuts, I got me something. I don't know. I don't. I'll take the gold and just. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just kind of do with that. I mean, ammunition, I, also very valuable. See, that's kind of what I was thinking about, like ammunition or something. That, that'd be a good answer. But mine is just unlimited hot fries, like constantly hot <laughs> French fries. So everywhere I go, I just bring a big bowl of hot French fries. So this uh, like, hero of that's party. better than gold. That's better than gold, you're telling me. You can sell. Think about how much fast food places, people just go there because they want French fries. You can give them French fries for $3 a pop, and it does nothing for you. So you can make a bunch of money and you have french fries and three dollars a pop is what you're selling that's crazy did I mean, you they're hear, hot and they're fresh 
Of course, we had bad storms. Lori's dealing with some bad storms. We had this in St. Louis, too. As a matter of fact, it, it really hit hard down by where the shop is at. And uh, this guy uh, was at, uh, uh, has a tent, fireworks tent, at uh, Walmart, and he didn't have it secured down properly. And the thing ends up blowing over or away or whatever, and then the fireworks are exposed. And out of the woodwork comes all these people who loot and steal all the fireworks. Yeah. And, and uh, but what what gets me about this thing is first of all i don't know why people steal a bunch of shit i, I, I don't know how you ever think that's right you're like wow well, the tent's gone i can just take whatever the fuck <laughs> i want i don't get i don't get that at all so i'm not condoning that in any way i, I think kind of like terrible. going through a tornado area where someone's house just got blown down oh look free french fries <laughs> or whatever you want right, to find right and so i and i don't even know if this ends up being covered for insurance or not but the guy lost his whole summer, but even if it, let's say it is covered by insurance, he gets a check for everything that he spent on the, uh, on the fireworks that got stolen. Okay. He's still out, whatever he has to pay rent, which I'm sure is pretty high to Walmart. He's still out maybe the tent and all. there's a, he, he's, he's losing money this year versus yeah. they said he was going to make, I think between 500,000 and a million dollars selling fire. So now I'm thinking, why the hell am I in the booze business? I just need to be selling fireworks for like, you know, 30 days. Six and months. That's it. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's just, it's a short window. It's like three or four weeks. True. That's it. That's it. That's all they sell them. And then, yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but it was bad. Uh, apparently, uh, and I don't even understand how this can happen. A tractor trailer was on that parking lot and tipped over because of the wind. That's some bad yeah. wind. That, that's it is. It was rough. The Lee's yeah. chicken sign was hitting cars, and yeah, Lee's chicken flew out. Uh, um, uh, the other place next door, Captain D's, they lost part of a sign or something too, right? Yeah, they did. Long Somebody John Silver lost some roof tiles. Long John Silver's the lost their lost their. Uh, uh, sign too. And I saw it. I found it down the block across the street. I didn't know if I should call them and be like, Hey, I found your sign. I figured other people did that, but I saw it over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it poured like that today. Again, it was pouring raining sideways. Just all of a sudden outside the way. Yeah. That, like, that was actually my fault. So that one was my fault. I lit my grill. Okay, as soon as I fault. lit the grill, as soon as I lit the grill, it was sunshine. And then as <laughs> soon as I light the grill, I don't know anything. It's supposed to rain today or anything. It starts pouring down rain. I'm like, son of a bitch. Are you kidding me again? This happens to me every time I try to try to light the, the grill. It rains. Just I'll, my, my wife will verify this. It's, it's been uh, happening for years. I think that means you can't grill anymore, Steve. If yeah. it's going to. Yeah. Besides when it, we're in a drought, just grill 24-7. Yeah. Back to the ammunition thing. One of Jim's uh, featured stories, you know, he's he's got a couple dozen stories, and one of them is about his son's a financial planner, and Jim wanted to invest in some gold. And his son said, "Don't mess with that, uh, you know, because if the economy goes bad, you know, you need bullets." And I don't necessarily agree with that. And and here's why: if the economy just goes bad, where you need bullets. You're, everyone's fucked and, and uh, nothing means anything. I, I, you know, it's that at that point, I, I might just, uh, I've had a good run and I think I'll just run through the streets and uh, sing until someone shoots me and that'll be, that'll be it for me. Uh, oh, no. but, you got to see how far you can get in your whiskey comp collection before. Okay. Like, All right. Start just, draining some bottles and you know, the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm definitely not going to go out without drinking that Booker's Rye. I've got for sure. So that's the time to open the Booker's Rye for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're going down the toilet. Yeah. Going to pop this real quick. Yeah. I think that uh, as a financial planner, you got to believe that the uh, economy is going to last. You're not giving a, a advice for survival things like, uh, you know, freeze dried food and uh, and bullets is what you need to be investing for the future. And I, then I don't even need a financial invi investor at that point. I, I'll just get the, uh, I, I, I could just do that on my own. I don't need somebody beyond that. That's the only advice I need then. That's it. Okay. I'll start freeze drying food. Yeah. Um, but I don't believe in that stuff. So I don't, uh, we've made how it this much far. Of it was actual financial advice and how much of it was like, oh, hey, you should do this instead with yeah. like knowing Jim's situation. Yeah. Well, if, and if Jim followed that advice, I know he has a bunch of ammunition. I don't know if he stepped up after that, but I mean, that's certainly a good investment. I mean, uh, bullets are worth shit. If you look at what they are worth now versus what they were, you know, five years ago, uh, crazy. We should all been been buying bullets. Uh, that would be, and yeah, we should have invested everything. I should have drained my 401k and bought bullets. So uh, it ends up working out, but there's a lot of stuff like that. Like, how do you know what to get? Uh, bullets, I think are always good because people always need that. And 
Um, there's always mullets? this right to- And I was like, yeah, mullets are great. I love mullets. I don't know why we yeah. switch topics so quickly. Guns. Guns are good. Too good. Yeah, the guns are good. I think uh, high-end whiskey is always good, too. I think that you can't go wrong with, if you know what you're doing, you know whiskey, I think if you get the good stuff, it's not going to lose its value. Because it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't go bad over time. Uh, you know, if you haven't opened it or anything, it's just as long as you're preserving it properly, it should be as good uh, today versus a decade from now. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely. But I, we're not investors. We don't, don't take investor <laughs> advice from us, well, please. No, we're idiots. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm 55 years old. I'm still podcasting because I don't know what, what I got. What can I do better? I can't. I have no life skills. <laughs> so all I can do is bourbon stuff. So don't take investment advice from me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. No. I know I'm about not, trees. Trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know real well, of course. Of course. Limousine Northern Oak. Ohio, yes. So your f- most famous uh, thing. So you did train a lot of people on that because, uh, yeah, no one had any idea. And, of course, you just made it up. But, yeah, I guess any of us could come up with that kind of knowledge. It's cracked me up this week since we've gotten Dancing Goat in. How many people come in and – I'll say something about Limousine Oak or somebody else will. <laughs> and like regulars that are there all the time look at me like, what? What's going on here? It's like, where were all of you when this happened? This was right. a big thing. It was on all the podcasts. It's a big moment. Yeah. Well, for sure. But then you, as much as that happens, then we get people we don't even know busting on you on the internet that must have heard it on the show, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're regulars or not. I don't recognize the name, and they're they're making fun of you for the limousine oak, yeah, Northern Ohio. Yeah. It's funny. Some of the people I expect it to know it. I'm like, wow, I right? Didn't know about that? Yeah, Steinkamp. He's like, tell me more about this. <laughs> That's his favorite line. You bring up more something. About this. You bring up something. He's always like, tell me more about this. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Just tell me more about this Northern Ohio. So there you go. On that note, it is time to drink. What are you drinking there, Darren? Uh, I'm going to have some old Jet Brothers. Just because okay. Miss Becca Sue couldn't be here doesn't mean I can't drink good whiskey okay. from the distillery. Okay. Nope. <laughs> uh, that was actually pretty good for you. That, oh. that, was, that was your okay. best cork pop ever. Uh, I've got Elijah Craig 12-year-old, a big red Clifford. Ooh. Yeah, look at this. It's probably older than you. So here we go. Cork pop. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was good. I think it won, but you know what? I'm going to give it to you because you showed up tonight, and uh, we heard yours, unlike most of them. So I'm going to say you won. So how about that? Oh, for- yeah, it was a landslide win. No one could argue differently. Oh, yeah, exactly. Cheers. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be continuing on talking, uh, just two of us, what do you do when the rest of the crew doesn't even show up for podcast night? We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon, as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. 
In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Hello, this is Jeff from Iowa, and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily with Colonel Steve. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Steve Aikley. I'm with Darren McCroy. We are here with uh, just together, getting ready to uh, <laughs> just the two of us. So, uh, but Lenny says he's showing up. So we'll see if he shows up. He said he thought it was six o'clock. Uh, I'm just going to check to make sure I didn't put that wrong in here. I'm, I'm going to check this real quick. He'll be coming. He should be coming in. Probably Central time doing. for sure. Yeah, it's it's six o'clock somewhere. So yes, uh, here's the actual text. So can you podcast this Sunday, July second at seven p.m. Eastern, six p.m. Central, five p.m. Mountain? And uh, he says sure. And then I say, are you coming on? Shit, I thought it was six. <laughs> I'll hop on now. So uh, Lenny will apparently be joining us. So yeah. So there's that. We've got that going for us. Yeah. Uh, we're hitting it hard now. Right. So uh, what are your thoughts? You, you're uh, a couple of months into this thing. You're, I mean, you're working the shop often by yourself. So you're, you're, you've come that far along. How do you like it so far? I like it. I lo- love people coming in, seeing them in the parking lot. Like mm-hmm. uh, today, Spencer came in uh, almost at closing time. And he started yelling, Darren, Darren, wait, wait. All, all the way <laughs> outside of the parking lot. I, I was still inside, but. <laughs> yeah, I heard him yelling through the window. So that that was kind of cool. Oh, good. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's cool. So yeah, you got to see Spencer. Yeah, it's 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 nice seeing the regulars, right? It, it's, yeah, uh, it's a fun thing for sure. People like that place, and uh, that's that's important. I, I you know, um, I, I I don't know. I think it's special. I think that people feel ownership of it i think they feel like it's one of their favorite spots i think they feel like it's just a place that like i don't i never felt that way about a liquor store i never you know i mean yeah I, there's liquor stores i go to and ones that i like better than others and places where you can get your good stuff at but uh I just it's never the most cool cheers like place i've ever been to yeah like you watch cheers and oh everyone knows your name and like they like of course it's a tv show and they play it up but that is what the abv barrel shop is yeah. Yeah. So, and I think some of that comes because that combination of being at the shop and then having this medium too. So there's examples of people where they don't necessarily know some of the regular, uh, other regulars because they haven't run into them, but because we have the, the media company, we do podcasts and we talk about those individuals and then they also uh, see them because we have a, you know, our club, which is a private group then. So they can see them on Facebook. They can see who they are, that type of thing. So yeah, they get to be a little more friendly. Well, lo and behold, look who it is. Lenny Eckstein has showed up. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it clearly says five o'clock, right? You're admitting that it does say five mountain. Uh, yeah. Clear admission. I, uh, I miswrote it down. You know what it is? I, not that this is a good excuse, but like when you make an iCal event or a calendar event on your phone and you're just kind of flicking through the time, it's like a, like a slot machine wheel. And sometimes it just yeah. like goes like past and you'll notice. Okay. Yeah. Well, My bad. It, it happens. You know, these things happen. So, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, how come you're at home? Is it because of the time? I thought it was at six. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I got time to make some dinner. <laughs> and also, my kid's here and Amy's out, so I can't leave. Right. I mean, I can, okay. but it's not yeah. ideal. It's not Nine ideal. Years old. Right. Right. You come home. My you come home and the yeah, the house is just gone. Yeah. Arlo's there. I, I was trying something, Dad. I was just trying yeah. trying something. I couldn't resist the violence. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, and you got any of that kind of stuff going on? You guys shoot some fireworks? Yeah. I mean, um, they're. I don't. I feel like state by state, they're like different with what class of fireworks. Uh, mm-hmm. They permit like and are allowed, and I think like Colorado is a little better than like sparklers and snakes, but not uh-huh. much better. I mean, yeah, I think yeah. you gotta go to Wyoming and get legit ones. So we just have mediocre ones. 
Okay. Wyoming has the good stuff, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything goes there. Yeah. It's it's Thunderdome. Yeah, for sure. Probably because Colorado is likely to light on fire. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And there, whereas Wyoming also like like light on fire, but I don't think they care. Right. There's not a lot to burn. Right. Yeah. So, uh, what are you having for dinner there? Oh, uh, well, if you must know, uh, yeah, tuna must. with furikake seasoning. Oh, furikake. Yeah, yeah, I, oh. yeah, mostly because I like the word. Uh, actually, I bought it because I wasn't even sure what it was. I just was curious about it, the word. And then I uh-huh. thought it would be awesome on a burger at our kitchen at Deerhammer, but our crew could never really get their shit together. So I was like, well, you're definitely not going to play with furikake if you can't, like, figure right. this out. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, I just put it on my tuna. It works pretty well. Uh, and it's yeah. You got a you got a uh, case of uh, filikaki. So now, yeah. <laughs> what do you do with all this? Well, you got to put it on your tuna, I guess. So, yeah, nice. exactly. Yeah, congratulations on that. So, yeah, we're doing a show actually right now, and it's not one oh. on the uh, one of the uh, ones on the script. We're doing one on what happens if you uh, have a podcast night and no one shows up. We were we were doing a show about that. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Becca's not here, so she's uh, she's the the host, and uh, yeah, and then we had one who had a legit excuse, no, no power. So apparently, there's some bad storms going on in Louisville. No power. Yeah, you can't stop that. Right, right. Nothing oh. you can do about that. So yeah, so this is where we're at. So now it's we're up to three of us. So uh, yeah, that's exciting. So well, good good podcast stuff to listen to. <laughs> uh, yeah, anything going on in the world of bourbon that's uh, of note that uh, that we should talk about? I mean, yeah. I, don't know. I mean, in general, yeah, like just, um, yeah. what about in Colorado? I, I see a lot of people want to come visit you. So hopefully, hopefully you're going to get some out there, Lenny. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah, I do hope so. We've been having a really good summer. I mean, uh, you know, we paused production, but we've been harvesting a ton of barrels to build up our stores because we, we do sell a lot in the summer. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, it's always good to see urban tourism come to Colorado. I think it's a good time in the summer. And uh, interesting, I guess like uh, pseudo happening. Um, my production manager quit, which was kind of a weird quit because he like he kind of quit like six months ago, but n- didn't tell us when he was going to be <laughs> done. <laughs> right. like, I'm quitting eventually. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, he was like, yeah. "Just you guys." I'm quitting. Know, when, are you, when are you leaving? Well, you'll know when I stop showing up. Yeah, that's yeah. That's kind of how it went. We we're like, "What are we supposed to do with that?" Like, it's right. uh, do we hire someone else or I, right. I don't know. Uh, so we kind of held the position hostage, but it's not like he wasn't doing good work in the meantime. Okay. But he finally decided it was time to move on. So he gave an official two week notice and he just had his last day. And we decided that we're likely not going to hire a new production manager soon unless like it's a perfect situation, but we are going to start looking. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to fire production back up pretty soon actually. And then, uh, just run a slightly scale back production program because I don't have time to make as much as we would otherwise. Um, but, you know, it'll kind of be fun to jump back in again. I haven't done all things production on my own for a while. Right. So, yeah. Right. Should be fun mashing, running stills from start to finish. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, back about has- how many people do you get a day to come visit you? Oh, well. That's a, we never counted, I would say, because it's not like, I mean, I'm sure you've probably been to a distillery similar to ours in terms of like foot traffic, just by nature of the area. Like we're not a drive to destination on our own, okay. but our little town is because people are coming here for the weekend or for a vacation for the week or longer. And, um, you know, I mean, it's packed today. I was by there earlier and I was, I kind of ran away. I actually, I tried to run away. <laughs> And uh, the woman, we found this awesome woman who's, uh, she's from Ohio and used, I forgot the name of the distillery she used to work at, but she knows her shit. And uh, this woman, Tammy Braymeyer, and uh, she's been, she offered to do tours for us. I was like, oh, thank God, this is awesome. (laughs) Like I somebody who wants to do tours. Um, so she was given a tour and she was like, oh, there you are. You have to meet everyone. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's not that I don't typically want to meet people, but I was just, I was with my kid. I was exhausted. Uh, that was a long way of saying, I mean, I would say like, I don't know, hundreds, maybe like on a day like today, we'll probably get like three to 500. Okay. Maybe, so depending. a couple. Yeah, it's hard to, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, it was packed today and, 
you know, you cycle through. I just hadn't been out there yet, so I was just trying to get an image in my well, head yeah. how many people come. It's also, yeah, it's it's, it's not a, a it, big distillery. I mean, it's and tiny. it's not well, it's not a big town either. I mean, no. you, you know, you you talk about if you're going to go to Buna to to yeah. whatever it is, outdoor activities and all that. At some point, you're going to walk down Main Street. Well, that means you're going to walk past Lenny's place, and you're probably going to look in, check it out. You may grab a drink, not even plan to go there or anything else. It's just like, oh, okay, let's let's check out what this is all about and grab a drink. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would never use the term uh, curb appeal for anything that I do. But when you walk by and see people like having fun on the patio, it kind of like, oh, yeah. It. So, yeah, we pull a lot of folks. It's uh, It works out really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, fair enough. On that note, we're going to wrap this uh, special edition up as we uh, did a show about nothing, kind of like Seinfeld. And uh, I think it turned out well. I think it's uh, actually some of our finest work. So we'll wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find us. Darren, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me showing up to the podcast on time at The Bourbon Adventures. All right, Lenny. Um, you can find me chewing while recording, unfortunately. My bad. I also show up late. Um, but on social media, Deer Hammer, on the web at DeerHammer.com. You can also order our product. And uh, you can also hop over to Sealbox, which is another cool place to order our product. We have some cool single barrels over there. And, uh, yeah, maybe I'll get my shit together by next show. Okay. Well, well hopefully, hopefully. Uh, people like the phrase uh, Sealbox money. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to you so, like, so yeah. there's certainly a, a big difference now because you got the seal block money so yeah, yeah people like people do money, but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah you got the seal block money so uh for me i'm an easy guy to find i'm at steve akeley on twitter instagram or facebook i've got a website steve akeley.com we've also got that company website abvnetwork.com check it out everything that we do is out there also be sure to come by and see us abv barrel shop you may see jim you may see me you may see darren you may see all three of us depending on when you get there so check us out online abvbarrelshop.com also, if you like the show, give us a five-star review. It helps new people find what we're doing. That's pretty darn important to us, particularly when you leave comments. We like that. And finally, if you want to get involved, head over to patreon.com slash the ABV network. On that note, we'll let you go for today. We'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye, y'all. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat Offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Boom, 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 boom.